Something curious had happened back in 1816. Weather all around the globe, but especially in the northern hemisphere, went completely off the usual rails. Heavy snow falls in June, lakes covered in ice in July, crops damaging frost in August. Temperature could go from a normal summer heat to a winter frost in matter of hours. To add to the misfortunes, if it wasn't snowing at the moment, it was raining, almost constantly. Season of 1816 had the worst weather conditions for agriculture in history. Food shortages came inevitably in the aftermath. In Europe, which was just recovering from the Napoleonic Wars, lack of food caused the worst famine of the 19th century and led to a very violent riots. And as if that wasn't enough, a year later typhus epidemic broke out, sweeping through the malnourished population of bees, claiming tens of thousands of lives. Similar events were occurring all over the world, and the year 1816 became commonly known as the year without summer. But what was possibly the cause behind all of this? In 1816 in London, the Times newspaper ran a small story about a volcanic eruption on the island of Sumbawa in Indonesia. News did not travel fast at that time. This article, well, in fact just a letter from a merchant, was published more than a half a year after the actual event. Little did the people of that time knew that this story was pointing at the real culprit behind the weather anomalies of that year. On 10th April of 1815, on the other side of the globe, Mount Tambora exploded spectacularly. It was the biggest volcanic explosion in the last 10,000 years. Strength of the explosion was equivalent to 60,000 Hiroshima atom bombs and could be hit 2,600 kilometers away. To better understand just how powerful it was, consider this. Before the explosion, Mount Tambora stood tall at 4,300 meters. Afterwards, its peak dropped to just 2,150 meters. About one third of the height just disappeared, and the whole mountain was turned into a hollow crater. The devastating tool of the massive eruption was beyond counting. Blast and associated tsunamis killed tens of thousands. Houses hundreds of kilometers away collapsed under the debris and ash fell at least 1,300 kilometers away, contaminating water sources in wide radius. Now, you might be wondering how it is possible that a volcanic eruption can cause a winter. You might have heard before about something called nuclear winter, a global weather cooling condition which is to happen in the aftermath of a large-scale nuclear war. Ensuing widespread firestorms are to release huge amount of soot into the atmosphere, effectively blocking the sun rays and preventing them from warming the earth. Volcanic winter is like a natural version of the same thing. In 1815, Mount Tambora ejected immense amounts of volcanic ash into the atmosphere, which spread easily by jet streams and basically covered the earth, sort of like a great cosmic umbrella, temporarily reducing the sun's effectiveness and cooling the earth, resulting in a volcanic winter. If you wonder what it looked like for the observer under the umbrella, you would see a constant haze hanging all over the sky. This lasted up to a few years after the eruption. Old paintings from the said time captured rather well how this could have really looked like. With them, let me read a citation of thoughts about the event from someone who lived through it. During the entire season, the sun rose each morning as stood in a cloud of smoke, red and rayless, shedding little light or warmth and setting at night as behind a thick cloud of vapor, leaving hardly a trace of its having passed over the face of the earth. Volcanic eruptions are difficult to predict and are impossible to prevent, even with all modern tools at our disposal. Best we can do is to evacuate the denizens from the area. In this matter, we are pretty much at the mercy of mother nature. Luckily, an eruption on the scale of Tambora does not happen often and we might not see the like for thousands of years. Volcanic winter of 1816 showed us one more thing, and that's just how delicate our planet's thermostat is. For all the havoc the year without summer brought, the global temperature of the Earth dropped by just 0.7 degrees Celsius. This might show the dangers of the global warming in a new perspective. Changing the global temperature even by a small amount can have grave consequences. Tempering in any way with the natural thermostat of the Earth is most certainly a terrible idea. Extreme events, however, can sometimes have some unexpected outcomes and be a catalyst for progress. In the 19th century, transportation still depended on animals, mostly horses. With famine hitting hot, animals were first to go, and this inspired Kat Rice to look for alternative ways of transportation. He came up with Draisine a very basic two-wheeler without any pedals or anything of the like. You had to propel yourself off the ground with your feet. Even despite that, this invention is a real milestone and marks the beginning of mechanized transportation. Year without summer had an influence on literature as well. On summer, less vacation in Switzerland, Lord Byron and a group of friends ended up confined in the house by a terrible weather of 1816. To shorten the time, they have been reading ghost stories and then decided to have a competition, for which everyone had to come up with a horror story of their own. Lord Byron came up with a story about vampire. This might not sound very special nowadays, but this was one of the very first stories with a vampire team ever. Even though this work helped to establish one of the most popular fantasy teams and has been a major inspiration for Count Dracula himself, 
another competitor of Chine Lord Byron, and came up with a character which is still popular to this date. At that time, 18 years old Mary Shelley wrote what is considered the first science fiction story ever, Frankenstein's Monster. Brutal and harsh weather, which is constant throughout the whole novel and gives it a really dark and gloomy atmosphere, was inspired by the unending rainstorms of the year. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.